So Lightroom has rolled out a brand new update which has some incredible features that are gonna help speed up your workflow. So let's go ahead and talk about it, my friend. So the main update on this is going to really deal with masking. And you'll notice that we have a few different options here with the first one being select subject, select sky, color range, and luminance range, and depth range. Well, let's go ahead and test out the select subject part. So all you gotta do is just go ahead and click select subject. And you'll notice that it actually creates a sort of like layer system like Photoshop, which is fantastic because it makes things so much easier. And now you'll notice after it finished loading, it has now selected the subject in your photograph. You can also of course click on the show overlay. That way you can toggle back and forth between if you would like to see what's selected or just to make it simple, you can go ahead and click O on your keyboard. Now that you have your subject selected, you can go ahead and make of course your edits to go ahead and alter the image to whatever you best see fit. And it just makes life just so much easier. Now I would also like to go ahead and dive deeper into this. So let's say right you've got your full subject selected but you don't want every bit of your subject edited so what you could do now is hit the subtract button and what you'll do is you'll select your brush and now you can go ahead and erase parts of the mask that you don't want to be affected now same thing as well with the add button right let's say you click the add let's say you select the brush now you can add things in as well to the mask that you have already created now I did also mention that this is like a layer system like Photoshop, right? So let's go ahead and click on create new mask. Now you do have again, different subjects here. So this time let's go ahead and try out the, let's see the linear gradient. Let's do that. So now I've selected linear gradient, go ahead and get that created. Now you'll notice that it creates a completely separate mask from this. So personally myself, I love to work in layers. It keeps things a lot more organized. It's easier to go ahead and work with these types of tools. And just to make things a little bit easier, you can also also go ahead and double click it and you can go ahead and change the name of that layer. Now I am curious, you know, whenever it comes to a little bit of more complex images with a lot of things going on, how is the subject selection going to hold up? Let's go ahead and try just a few more different images and see how it performs. So here's an image that has quite a bit actually going on. We got a lot of things going on in the background. So again, we're going to go ahead and click on the masking. We're going to go ahead and select the subject. And now we're going to just give it a few seconds and see how it does. Wow. Okay. I'm really really impressed by this. So let's just go ahead and uh, pixel peep and, and see what it's like. Okay, so not too bad. It may have grabbed a little bit right here from the background, maybe around the brim of the hat. Honestly, this is just life-changing. It's going to speed up my entire workflow. It's going to speed up your entire workflow. I'm super excited about this. Now I'm curious, does it work with an image like this that doesn't necessarily have like a face attached? Let's just go ahead and try it out. Well, okay. So it didn't grab the entire image itself, but it did know to grab the overall hand and also the camera itself. So now that we've tried the subject, let's go ahead and try the sky selection and see how that performs. So this image does have a few things going going on in the background. We got some trees in there. Let's go ahead and select the sky. Boom. I mean, there we freaking go. Look at that. Now, just like the subject selection, let's go ahead and try a few other images that are maybe a little bit more complex with the background. We're going to go ahead and select the sky and just give it a little bit here. And oh my God, that is freaking impressive. Like literally this is insane. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Pixel P. Okay. So it did get part of the buildings, but I I'm honestly pretty okay with that because it won't really affect much of the overall background on the on the buildings. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the rest of these tools. Now the ones that we're not so familiar with is color range and luminance range. So let's go ahead and start off with color range. So you'll go ahead and select color range. And you'll notice once you hover over your image, you now have an eyedropper tool, right? So let's say I want to just select the red in this photograph. I'm going to go ahead and click anywhere here in this area. It has now created a mask over that. Now I didn't choose the best color, obviously, but let's Let's go ahead and try it out with the blue. It is now selected the blue for you. How freaking incredible is this for Lightroom and for your workflow? Okay, so now the next option is gonna be the luminance range. So we're gonna go ahead and select luminance range. Now, once you go back to the image, you're gonna notice again that the eyedropper is now on your photograph. And basically what the luminance tool is for is to help you choose those like really bright areas in your photograph to make it easily more adjustable. So for example, let's go ahead and click on the brightest area of this photograph, which is gonna be the sun itself. And now you'll notice really quickly, it has grabbed every bit of these super bright areas within your photograph. Now you do have your luminance range right here 
in this little toolbar, which you can, of course, slide and adjust, which will affect the overall selection that it has chosen. You can also go ahead and check mark this show luminance map, which will show you what is selected out of your photograph. This honestly makes it super easy to see kind of what's going on. So those are the main changes that were done to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, if you did learn something by watching this video, make sure you leave a like, make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content. And as always, stay creative, my friend.